Hey, 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 welcome, welcome. I see Mumsy's in the house. Mumsy's in the house. Glad, uh, so, so glad to have you here today. And uh, we're going to have fun with uh, Gen X, of course. Boomers are welcome. Uh, millennials are welcome. Gen Z's welcome. Any alphas out there, welcome to. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be going over some Gen X memes uh today and and uh giving our own thoughts and comments on them as as we look at them so hopefully uh chalet will be joining us and hopefully andy can pop in tony i hope you're out there um maybe morgan uh he can he he can never write in the chat but he's certainly welcome to to join the show uh and watch so yeah, what a wonderful, wonderful day today. And um, well, I guess we, you know, especially for those who are maybe watching on replay, we will just get started. Um, whoops. Okay, so that means I need to share my screen first. Audio. Okay. All righty. So here we go. Uh, let's see. I can make this theater mode. It's better for you. So this first meme says, in the 80s, this would have been a whole day of BMX fun. Now, just in case anyone doesn't know what BMX is, that's your bicycle. It's a, it's a bicycle, but instead of like a 10-speed or banana seat or something, it was a little bit more off-road, like a dirt bike, but a bicycle, a bicycle dirt bike, right? And um, yeah, so if you found a piece of plywood <laughs> or any kind of scrap wood, uh, you'd be making a ramp out of that and and having fun all day long. All right, so let's see what else we got. This would have been a whole day of BMX fun, at least until the... Turn the turn. No need to have the sound on. Uh, all righty. Okay. If you were Gen X, you probably recognize this breakfast. It is cornflakes with banana slices. Yes, indeed. I know, uh, Mumsy, you fed this to me regularly. This was definitely a, a normal part of my mornings growing up. Uh, to have cornflakes with banana slices. I don't know, like, when that started. Where, I mean, Mumsy, can you share, like, where did you get the idea for that? How did you know to give me cornflakes with banana slices? You know, I'd be interested to, to hear your thoughts as the mom. Yeah, tasty, definitely tasty. I know that's kind of a lot to write about. Um maybe some kind of short answer about how, I mean, was it promoted somewhere? Um, did Gurmy give you cornflakes with bananas? Is that something that was passed on to you? Um, or is it something that started with you feeding that to me? While you're typing, I'm going to go ahead. You just thought it would go together. Interesting. Interesting. And uh, so like there was this hive, now we call it a hive mind. We're in this social consciousness of parents raising us Gen X. You all did it. Was it a, didn't at some point cornflakes actually put a picture on the box? I think. Let me see. Corn flakes box 70s. And um, okay, so I'll share this tab. So let's see, we got straw. Here's strawberries. That looks a little early. It says 1970s. What's that one? That's strawberries. Frosted flakes, corn flakes with no fruit on it. Oh, let me do images. I'm sorry. 
Huh. So they did have strawberries on the boxes, but not bananas. So maybe you thought, oh, well, bananas, um, you know, I, I don't have any strawberries right now, but I have bananas. So I'm just going to slice up some bananas. Tony the Tiger. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go, go back to the memes. Let's see what we got next. Maybe I should leave the sound on, but just stop it at each meme. Okay. When I was young, I thought this was the epitome of wealth and sophistication, the Vianetta Breyers ice cream cake. Uh, yes, this is something, I mean, we didn't have it a lot. I think um, Joan, my mother-in-law, would always have something like this in her um, in her freezer that if a, an unexpected guest came over, you could always whip it out of the freezer. Um, that was definitely something that was common, but yeah, this was a, this was not something that you had every day that you, that, you know, yeah, the, the commercial, look at it's on, a, it's on a silver platter, you know, it, the, the commercials for it definitely made it seem like wealth and sophistication and, and we bought right into it for sure. Yay. Now Chalet's in the house. Chalet's in the house. Welcome. You just missed the cornflakes and bananas. <laughs> and now we've got Vianetta ice cream cake. I'm going to go ahead and turn, turn the sound on. Epitome of wealth and sophistication. I do remember those commercials, but I don't think I ever ate it before. Okay. There's, there's Tom and Jerry. We all grew up watching Tom and Jerry. Matchbox cars and the carry case. You were pretty cool if you had a full case of cars. That's for sure. Um, I had a matchbox case like this with lots of matchbox cars. A treat. Oh, yeah. To have that ice cream cake would be a real treat. Your brother had so many of the matchbox cars. Yeah. My my uncle John, who was kind of like my brother, um, uh, he had a lot. So I kind of like you know, adopted some of his, but I, you know, I loved getting, you know, being at Toys R Us or something and picking out uh, various matchbox cars to add to my collection. You had a pink Cadillac one. Oh, that's so cool. I remember having, I think I had a little ambulance. I had some muscle cars. Um, I had little, little tiny like sports cars, like a Carmen Ghia kind of thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, what do we got next? I think I actually like Matchbox cars better than I did Hot Wheels. It seems like they had a little more variety and maybe more well, modern type Hot cars Wheels. or something. I didn't, some of those that's here. I didn't really care about the brands between Matchbox and Hot Wheels. To me, it was like all the same. But I definitely had a case, whatever the name was on the case, but it had these like blue divider things that you could put the cars in that they would all fit in. In this case, our TVs were never stolen in the 80s. <laughs> TVs were never stolen. For sure, for sure. Uh, we had console, we would call this a console, a console TV. Notice you had dials to turn for the stations. Uh, there was no remote control on this one. They did come later, but um, uh, definitely growing up, we, you know, somebody had to get up and turn, turn the station. Um, and this is quite, quite a nice VCR uh, here going into the eighties uh, to have, have a, 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 in fact, that might even be like a VHS and a DVD. So for somebody to have that kind of set up, but still have the, the console, <laughs> that's kind of like opposite each other. That's your grandma's TV. Mumsy had one like that. Yes, I think we did for sure. Uh, all righty. That was one good thing about these super heavy wood panel TVs. Nobody certainly wasn't going to walk out of the house with them pretty easily, let alone walking out of the stores with them. 
Now, this game is called Dodgeball. <laughs> and if you play your cards right, the person you hate the most will be crying like a little <laughs> within minutes. There you go. Dodgeball. Who played Dodgeball? Definitely played Dodgeball. Through the years, you've seen those with other TVs put on top of them. Yes. <laughs> Just becomes a piece of furniture. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it becomes a, a literal TV stand. <laughs> the TV console becomes the TV stand for another TV. They made us play it. It was called Bombardo. Ah, well, I, I love those rubber balls, the, the dodge balls. We, we had, yeah, several different games that we would play out like during recess. Um, there was one that was, you, you, you had like kind of like a baseball diamond on, on the asphalt that was our playground outside the school. And, um, and you would kind of do it like baseball, but you had to like, you, you know, they, they would throw the dodgeball, to, you know, that rubber, that rubber ball that was a dodgeball, they would like ha have to bounce it at you. And then you would have to like hit it like this and you had people that tried to catch it and you had to run to first base. So it was kind of like a baseball thing. So there were lots of, and, and, and also the, um, it was like a volleyball, but on, on a string, on a pole. Oh my gosh. What was that called? So you had a pole, you had a string and then you had like a volleyball on it. And then you would, you would hit it. You'd have two people and like, you'd hit it back and back and forth. And if you missed it, it went around. Um, all those balls were great fun, but they could uh, whip him right at your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they tortured us as children. <laughs> Yours was just a lineup, one side against the other. Yeah, well, that's the typical dodgeball, yeah. So if you get hit by it, then you're out. It's like tag, but with a ball, right? Tether ball, thank you, thank you. Tether ball is the one on the pole. Yeah, and yeah. Every every school playground had te had tether balls, and you had to wait in line for your turn, you know, until somebody got out, and then then you would uh, play the winner. Cement playgrounds, that's right. And monkey bars, they all had monkey bars, and we swing, 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 you know, do jumps and flips and stuff like this on on the monkey bars over the cement. <laughs> Dodgeball, bring back some memories. I actually threw one so hard one time that it hit the bleachers and popped. Everybody just kind of stopped and stared at me for a minute. It popped. I just found my old boom box in the attic. Uh, Does anyone have 22 size D batteries I can borrow? That was one of the worst things about all the old electronics. <laughs> yeah, so the boom box. Uh, always took C and D batteries. There you go, the boom box. So you had these big speakers. You had all your, your AM, FM, TV band, everything here. Uh, you had a cassette player. Um, you could record mixtapes. Uh, but they needed all those D batteries. That's why they were so heavy and you had to boy carry them on your shoulder. Boy, times have changed. Yeah. You would play those clapping games where you sit in a circle and then also jump riping. Jump Jump roping, jump, jump rope. Yeah, jump rope, a double dutch. Yeah, yeah, jump rope. Yeah, totally got it. Yeah, times have changed. The ghetto ghetto blasters, yes, absolutely. We called them ghetto blasters too. And uh, so there you go. That was, uh, you know, we went from having like a Walkman to, you, you know, and having them, in our, you know, and like the little transistor radio to a Walkman, then and then to the boombox. Uh, yeah, a party, a party in a box, right? <laughs> and I always took at least four, if not eight, and sometimes even 12, which back then batteries weren't that bad a price. Have you guys seen the battery prices today? I mean, they're crazy. Uh, they just keep getting worse and worse all the time. You can pay twenty five dollars and get like twelve double A's or something. But I mean, it like at Christmas time and birthdays, it, you know, you always wanted these like new electronic toys, but they always needed batteries, and the batteries were not included. <laughs> so that became like a huge thing. Like if we had memes back then, batteries not included would be a beam, you know. Oh. Electric Avenue closed. There you go, Electric Avenue. 
Let's see. Small, big, small. Yes. Yes. As far as the house size, the, you know, you start with the small one then they got big, then they get small again into iPods and things like that. Who, what's this? What's the, what show is this? I know, I know, I know. Magnum PI, you know, a funny story. My mom will attest to it that, um, I had my, uh, my family doctor that was going to deliver Jasmine, my first, my firstborn. And, uh, we went to the hospital and they, you know, I, I went a couple of times and they sent me home. Right. And then like when, when it was really labor, um, it's like I had her within six hours. I had from, from being at home and having that contraction that I, I was like, Whoa, no, we, 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 we definitely need to go to the hospital. Um, from that moment, that was, that was like at midnight until I had her was like six o'clock in the morning. And, um, so my doctor came out, checked me, said, well, I think, I think he went ahead and like, they have like a, it almost looks like a knitting needle and, um, and broke, broke the water because the water wasn't broken yet. This was, you know, this was like five, five o'clock in the morning. So I'd, I'd, I'd been having all these contractions and, you know, they're, they're like, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. And, oh, I was just so miserable. And so they said, okay, well, we're going to break the water. So they break the water and my doctor go, it, go leaves. He says, okay, I'll, I'll come, you know, I'm gonna go check on some other patients or whatever, and then I'll come back. And so in the, it's not the emergency room, but like the maternity ward kind of thing. So they had, they had like, you have delivery rooms, you have surgery, like for, for cesareans you have, and then you have like these waiting, it was a private room with a bed on it um, that they keep you in for when, when a labor, labor room. Let me see what you guys are saying. Where's Andy and Queen and Lemoyne and Snow? I know. Where are they? Uh, I beat you. <laughs> Cute Tom. Yeah, Tom Selleck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's who Magnum PI was played by Tom Selleck. I had dream a dream years and years ago that you were cleaning Tom Selleck's house. <laughs> yeah. Because you were a cleaner. You cleaned for anyone who doesn't know you cleaned houses. And so I, I know I like, I would dream when I was a waitress, I would dream of waiting tables, you know, and have a nightmare would be like this customer from hell, you know, as I'm waiting tables. So it's like what your job is becomes in your dreams. He, he was nice though. Well, that's good. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm in the labor room. They, cause it's not time to move to the delivery room and they break my water in this labor room and my doctor had left. And so the on-call doctor for delivering babies, you know, in that maternity ward was a doctor that looked just like Tom Selleck, right? Mumsy. We even, we even had him like, so in my baby book or something, we had him sign like autograph the, the baby book. <laughs> they look like Tom Selleck, but yeah, that, I mean, to, to finish the story about giving birth one, once they broke the water, my doctor left, it's like the contractions just went through the roof and the dilation. Cause anyone in a dilation, uh, you have to get to a 10 and I was like stuck at a three. I was just stuck at a three and I wasn't moving toward that 10. 10 is when you get to push. And, but when they broke the water, I went from a three to a 10 in 45 minutes in, in 45 minutes, it was time to push. And let me tell you, that was so painful. Yeah. Though they say that like when it takes longer, it kind of, it's, you know, it builds and builds and builds. I mean, I, I, it's all past the pain threshold, you know? Yeah. You don't recall. You just remember I had back labor. Yes, I did. So she was like turned instead of face down, she was face up 
And so then the back of the head goes, hits your tailbone on the way out. You had a nice looking doctor, but he left and you were left with a mean Indian woman, Dr. Push Push. <laughs> All righty. When you're so bad at catching Smurfs, you're forced to find a new job. Yeah, that does look like the evil guy in uh, in in the Smurfs. Yeah, we we definitely had the Smurfs. Grow. I wasn't like all that interested in like having some Smurf like merchandise, like you know, T-shirts or lunch 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 boxes or anything. But you know, yeah, I did I did see a few episodes. I mean, it's definitely part of the generation. And uh, let's just say your bedside manner sucked. Her her bedside manner sucked. Yeah, yeah. Might have been the end of the shift, too, where she's just like, just push, get it over with. <laughs> I have to say that is a pretty good description, man. He really does look like a mother. Who knows what his name was on the Smurf? Put it down in the comments. I don't remember the name. This is what a serious mixtape looked like. Oh, look at that. The first one is Amy Grant, baby, baby. <laughs> Let's see what's on their mixtape. Uh how you tight had you hold you hold you tight by tara kemp i don't know that one brian adams uh that's got to be the one from robin hood uh marky mark i didn't care for him share love and understanding uh cmb i adore me amore i don't know who that is kathy dennis don't know who that is enigma yeah, I kind of remember them a, a bit. Sadness part one. Janet Jackson. Yeah, I didn't care for her so much. Naughty by Nature. I don't know that one. Celine Dion. Where does my what love go now? I don't know. Madonna. Oh, this is uh, it's funny. This is 1991 hits. <laughs> it says there. <laughs> Extreme more than words. Yeah. Hey, Andy in the house. Andy in the house. Great to be. Yeah, it's a serious mixtape. Smurfs think Washington Redskins. <laughs> You're guessing it was late 80s. Uh, yeah, late 1991, you know, 89, 1991. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, that's good enough. A t shirt can't cause blind rage. The t shirt causing me blind rage. This Nick Nickelback is neat. <laughs> Let me back that up a second so we can see that. Oops. Serious mixtape looked like. Now I know I have to pause. A t shirt can't cause blind rage. The t shirt. Yeah, because if anyone doesn't know, I mean, us Gen Xers should know that this is actually Nine Inch Nails. The name of the band like this is Nine Inch Nails. And it, which is like hardcore metal ish music and Nickelback was a lot more like I, you know, grunge alternative type music. A lot of people, they all, they, all, they love to bash on Nickelback. I like Nickelback's music. I, you know, um, but definitely nine inch nail, somebody who is a fan of nine inch nails would absolutely hate Nickelback and to see Nickelback is neat instead of like nine inch nails. Yeah. That would trigger somebody that that's a, you don't see, you don't see Andy. You don't what you guys don't see Andy. I see Andy, Andy, you're, you're slow to show up on, on YouTube. Sometimes our comments don't make it on the screen Mwah, on your TV screen. Wow. I don't know why. I know that like other, other, uh, YouTubers would be saying, Oh, YouTube is like censoring, censoring what? Censoring Andy, sending heart and, and cool glasses uh, emojis, you know? Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's just slow. It must just be slow. Okay, everyone's saying hello. You couldn't say jump rope. <laughs> jump rope. I know that's that the double O is supposed to be OP. I get it. No worries. Okay, let's. You're causing me okay. blind rage. This was a snack when I was growing. Now this is a southern thing. This is a southern thing. Growing up in California, this was not a snack. 
Andy, did you ever have just straight tomato with salt on it? I know my dad in Georgia who grew up in North Carolina, but I, you know, from the time I was 12, I spent every summer in Georgia because uh, he was living there. Um, this was one of his favorite things. Just eat a tomato right off the lot, right off the vine and shake salt on it as you're eating it. Um, so it's definitely a Southern thing. What about Iowa? Was it an Iowa thing? Oh, you love that. Yeah. Social. So Midwest and Southern delicious garden, little tiny tomatoes and salt. Oh, that sounds, that sounds good. I think they do this everywhere. I, uh, I never, I, I never saw it in the San Francisco Bay area. Oh, Andy says, yes, nothing but tomato fields in orange County. Okay. There you go. Well, in the Bay area, I don't know, Mom, Mumsy, did you see people eating just a, tom a raw tomato? Uh, let, let me know. Because you were all you also grew up in the, the northern, like um, Massachusetts, whatever kind of area before coming to New York. I mean, uh, to the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so let me know if you ever saw anyone eating just a, a, a tomato, just taking a bite of tomato and shaking salt on it. Um, but I am familiar with it because of my dad. Grandpa did. Your grandpa or like my grumpy? Santa Ana was tomato seed. A tomato farm. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess if you grew up near tomato farms, then you'd be more exposed to it. I mean, in fact, a lot of Silicon Valley still had farms when I was growing up um, and they would have roadside stands that you could buy fresh vegetables and fruits. Um, and it was always great when, the, you know, you had to wait for things to be in season, you know, so it made it special. You just go to the grocery store now and buy any any fruit or vegetable any time of year. But when you had to wait for it, it really made it. So Gurmpy, Gurmpy would do that. I remember Gurmpy taking an orange and, 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 a, and a paring knife and like peeling it around and peeling it all the way around. So the peel was one piece of peel when he peeled the orange. It was pretty cool. That was like a little trick. Growing up. Yeah, you could pick a tomato off the vine, put a little salt on it, and eat it. The couches of my childhood. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, this one is The Simpsons. Um, is I'm thinking The Cosby Show for this one. I'm not sure. And this one, I don't remember this cartoon one. I, I, I don't remember this one at all. This one, it's not the Jeffersons. They were in a high rise. It almost looks like maybe All in the Family because All in the Family had the little stairs like this. And who's this nice, nice stairs? I don't remember. And this, uh, maybe this is the cause. No, the Cosby show had stairs on that were on that side. What are you guys saying? You, you had the couch with the stripes. Is it, oh, this one. <laughs> yeah, but these are all TV shows. So which TV shows are they from? I wonder if he gives the answer. He probably not. He probably asked people to give the answer in the comments. How many can you name? I'm going to. Yeah. How many can you name? Can you guys name any of them? Oops. Yeah, you could pick a tomato off the vine, put a little salt on it, and eat it. The couch. There we go. Can you guys recognize them as TV sets for what TV shows? Uh, this is The Simpsons, right? Is this all in the family? I'm trying to think, like, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe, um, oh, wait. You know what this one also looks like? Married with children. Did they have stairs like this? What are you guys saying? Archie Bunker, top right. All in the families. Okay. Oh, Roseanne is the stripes. 
Okay. 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 So this is Roseanne and this is all in the family. We know this is the Simpsons. Can you guys see these down here on the bottom? So we got, we got four of them because we've got all in the family. No, we've got three of them all in the family, the Simpsons and Roseanne. Does anyone recognize this cartoon or these two on the bottom? I guess not. Nobody's saying it. Cosby's is bottom left. Okay. So the, this one is the Cosby's left. Is this, is this one the left? I thought their stairs were on the other side. Were there stairs this way? I mean, maybe, maybe. So you're saying this one is the, is the Cosby's bottom left. Quahog. I, I don't know that. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I was wondering about that because I never really watched that show, but of course I'm aware of it. And um, yeah, because it, it, it looks fancy enough. It looks rich enough to be Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Oh, Family Guy. But that looks kind of has like a watercolor look. It wasn't Family Guy more the same style as The Simpsons as far as the, the artwork? Switch, oh, switch those. Okay, so this is, you're, you want to say this is Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and this one is Cosby. Okay, so now, let's move on. That's good. Good job. Good job. This was my childhood. How many can you name? I'm going to be honest here. I want to know how much. <laughs> For sale, how much? <laughs> that absolutely looks like, I mean, put sticking a for sale sign looks like something you could just like stick it on there, take the picture, take it back off again. Um, but I remember McDonald's getting the playgrounds. I was a little bit, I was a little bit old. I mean, but I was like, let's say 10, 11, 12 you know, and these are really more like five, six years old or whatever. Um, so I was still a kid, but I was an older kid when they started having playgrounds. Um, you have a picture of your daughter in one of those. Oh, cool. That's so cool. Scientist, you can't hear a picture. 80s kids. <laughs> is that, is that a team? Okay. Honest here. I want to know how much. Scientist, you can't hear a picture. 80s. Is that A team? The hamburger house. Yeah, yeah. Mc McDonald's had great, you know, and the hamburglar thing. And um, yeah. Can you hear the theme song with this one? Is it is it the A Team or MacGyver, the Hamburglar? Yeah. Okay, whatever. I'm 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 moving on from this one. Kids, we gave my dog. We gave my dog a mullet. I'm crying. <laughs> dog a mullet. That's just fun. I hope they named him MacGyver. When trying to sneak. I could do that to Popeye. Popeye's got the right kind of hair to do that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Whose grandma had one of these candy dishes? And then they had all those. Um, um, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Let me check. Jen is it? They always had these kind of candies in them, right? They always had these kind of, these hard, these hard candies that nobody wanted to eat, but you just wanted that. You wanted to have one. Oh, Mumsy says she still has it. And so does Chalet. Oh, that's what you hear helicopters outside right now. Oh my goodness. Airwolfy. Air, okay. It, the helicopter was Airwolf. Some hell yeah. Uh, you have the amber one. Andy has a few. Yeah, they would all get stuck together. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
But at Christmas, you'd get those. Um, let me see. I always like those gooey ones. Na, 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 na. Yeah, those are all normal. And Mumsy, you used to get them and then send them to me. Uh, okay, wait. But they were like taffy. And they had the Christmas tree in them. Come on. These! I love these, the peppermint. Brock's Christmas nougats. Oh my God. I love these. Easter's coming up. You got, uh, I got some peeps. Mom sent me some peeps last year. And so I got them and they're, and I, they're still soft. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have some peeps for Easter this year. All righty. So let's see. Oh, wait. Oh, oh my. I went back. Okay. Wait, I have to share this tab instead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. These chewy Christmas candies. Grandma always had a few lemon drops. Oh, I like lemon drops. You love things with lids. <laughs> Grandma always had cookie jars with homemade oatmeal cookies. Oh, I got a phone call from the post office. The, po the post office calls me to tell me I got a box. Right. Uh, and, uh, and so I, I, um, I, I got the phone calls. I'm going to go get my box tomorrow morning. And, um, Mumsy said she sent me butterscotch chips. So I'm going to make oatmeal cookies with butterscotch chips. I'm so excited. Like the tiny hard Christmas candies. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, you like the little tiny hard Christmas candies. These here. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good. But these, oh, these chewy ones. Oh my gosh. I love them so much. Um, all right. So let's go back to this video. What do we got? Candy. This was the loudest live. Yes, I can confirm. I'm this old. <laughs> who had, who had a couch like this? Mumsy and I, we didn't have one in our apartment. What, but who like aunt Susie? Is it aunt Susie that had one like this or did, um, did Pat and Wynn have one like this for a while? Uh, if, if no one in the family did, then one of the friend, my friends in the neighborhood, did. I, but I totally, totally recognize this sofa. Remember the hard candy, like squarish kind of gold on the outside and would crumble. Well, that sounds good. Like which one was that gold outside would crumble. It was, was it Christmas candy or just any time candy? Let me take, let me just say hard candy seventies. Oh, it's got a picture of the Neckos. I have neck mommy. Mumsy gave me tons. She loaded me up on Neckos. Wait a minute. So Andy, are you talking about like one, like within the mix, like one of, one of these or something different? You don't recall in the family. So it must've been a friend that had, that had that Christmas mostly. But it was square. Remember these neck, the candy necklaces. Oh my God. I love those. Uh, oh, oh, look at this. Oh my God. Oh, this is all the Brock's. Remember Brock's you, you go in and they'd have like the bins and you could, you could pick them all out. Um, and so the butterscotch, I love those. Not a big fan of just regular pepper, these coconut ones. Oh my God. And then the nougats with the fruit in it and the jelly, though, these jelly ones. Oh my gosh. And then these that were like caramel chews, but they had different flavors in the center, like these here and these here. 
Oh, and then there were these. I did. I wasn't a big fan of these here. Oh, and this was like a cinnamon. And then these were kind of like Brock's truffles, you know, the closest thing to like a truffle. I'm not seeing anything square. Let me, let me put uh, square gold hard candy. There's the butterscotch. Banana split. I remember those. Those were good. Lifesavers in general. All the, the, the butter rum. Oh, my God. Butter rum. Li Momsy, if you see butter rum lifesavers, grab some and throw them in the next box. <laughs> of course, Werther's and then Werther's came out and those are really good. But you know what? Oh, and the sixlets. Uh, you haven't given me sixlets in a long time. Sixlets. I love the sixlets. But the butter rum lifesavers. Oh. Candy buttons. Okay. I'm I'm not I'm not seeing the, the square gold. These? They're not square. They're caramel. I don't know. Let me see what you guys are saying. The butter rum. Yeah, the butter rum. <laughs> oh, look at Chalet and Andy both butter rum favorites. Uh, they would accompany that hard candy mix, but they were in their own bag or container. All right. Well, you're just going to have to send it. Oh, the old bottle caps. Yeah. The goldish color had striations in it. Christmas mostly. Yeah. I'll give it one more shot for you. Oops. All right. Is it in here? These? What else we got? We got those. Oh, with the stripes in like this one? I'm going to keep it there for a minute. Had striations. It goldish color had striations in it. Never really liked Lifesaver books either, but you would. Yeah, yeah, because there were some flavors that you didn't like. But yeah, they that was a cool thing when they came out with those um, books. It was like a book and it and it opened up and then you had rolls of Lifesavers in it. The, that was great. Um, oh, Mumsy said that you bought those for the grandkids, but they never really liked the books. And then Shelly agreed. Yeah. Uh, they were considered a fancy candy. Oh, you saw the ones that you like, bottom left. Oh, these here. Yeah, these were famous in the in the dishes. <coughs> but Andy, this has a striation. It's gold color and has a striation, and a rectangle could pass for a square. So I'm waiting for you to confirm if this is what you're talking about as your favorite one. Yeah, yeah. Old memories, yep. Where did you go, Andy? Andy disappeared on us. Okay, we're going to move on, Andy, but uh, there, there it is. You have to let me know. Okay, couches. All right. Oh, I got to share this tab instead. Okay, here we go. It went well with all the other wood grain furniture and walls. You might be old, but uh, I remember this. The California raisins. Those were funny. They're, they're, that was the claymation commercials. And uh, yeah, that was it. And then they made little rubber toys, plat, rubber pod, that couch. Yeah. Oh, it's close though. Okay. Okay. Well, that's as close as we're going to get tonight. Your kids were little when those came out. Right. Right. Exactly. My kids were little when they came out. Oh, Hardy's gave them out like with the, with the kids meal kind of things. Hardy's has a uh, bit sausage biscuits. Oh, yep. California raisins. I used to collect these. We're having company. Go get the fancy. <laughs> get the fancy cups, the wrestling cups. Of course, you had these big tumblers, uh, you know, 
but they could have anything and um, these are wrestling but you yeah you could have anything in them that's what you're saying like little square gold overstuffed pillows one inch square okay i believe you i believe you we just can't find the picture of it Cut. This is what us kids might have went and got, but this isn't what our parents was asking for. Who remembers the McDonald's mm -hmm. LT? Yep. The McDLT, where they put hot on one side and cold on the other side, then you get it and you put them together to eat. Yeah, I remember that. And in styrofoam. You still have a California Raisins figurine. That's cool. I, I don't think I have any anymore. As many, as much stuff as I have, I don't think I have one of those. Hardy's made really good cinnamon raisin biscuits. Ooh. But when it comes to cinnamon and raisins, I like them in the cinnamon rolls, which we talked about last night. So we're not going to go there again. <laughs> Lettuce and tomato on this side stays cool. The beef patty on this side stays hot. I need to bring this back as well as the quality of the food they had back then versus now too. Might have been cheap food back then, but at least it was still real. What 80s song would you be listening to driving down this road? Oh, cool. What 80s, 80s, 80s song? Running on Empty? Running on Empty. Uh, a good road song for me, but I think it's 70s is taking it easy you know take it easy taking it easy but that might be 70s oh yeah yeah i heard it through the grapevine of those california raisins <laughs> uh, ventura highway ventura highway How did that go? Oh, it's by America. Yeah. Good second. Okay, that's all I can play of it. Hmm. Ventura Highway in the Sunshine. Country roads. Country roads take me home. Oh, the, a, a horse with no name. Da, 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 a horse with no name. Da, na, 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 na. I don't know. I'm thinking more like uh, Tom Petty. The Eagles nibbling on a piece of grass. The horse with no name nibbling on a piece of grass or chewing on a piece of grass. Is that part of it? Oh, you mean in the car you're nibbling on a you're chewing on a piece of grass as you're driving. <laughs> okay, let's see what's next. I'd say one that nobody is saying is On the Road Again by Will and Nelson. Um, this okay. old Plymouth is for sale in a junkyard. But for some reason, no one wants to take it home and restore it. If you know what that reason. Look at those fins. Look at those fins on that car. You don't get them like that anymore. You could take that. You don't even need to use it as a car. You could use it as as a bed or a sofa or something. You know, repurpose. It is. Put it in the comments. Well, there's batteries not included as as yeah as a movie name. Don't look back. Was there a Route 66? Well, that there's there's no part of Route 66 that has that long stretch on it like that. Um, was it in Edsel? No, it says it something about it like a Pontiac or something. I'll go back and see. Plymouth. It's an old Plymouth. Is what it. The meme said, uh, Mumsy, was there a Route 66? No, but you you could like that song to when you're on it. Okay. 
mysteriously, I step out of the garage for a minute, and these scavengers are already stealing parts. Oh, how cute. There's somebody that's a Star Wars fan, right? Aren't these little things Star Wars? That's cute. That's that's that that's a Gen Xer being creative. The GI Joe aircraft carrier. Wow, I didn't have one of those. GI Joe aircraft. I mean, I ha I actually had a GI Joe doll, I think. But I never had a big aircraft carrier. That would take up a lot of space. What about trains? Choo choo trains. I don't think I ever saw one of those in real life. Yeah, see. <laughs> They say in the 80s, I was the best game system around. But I have no memory. <laughs> yeah, it was the best system around. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know, like, playing games with memory. That does I. I mean, after Nintendo, I never graduated after Nintendo's. Now that was a spoiled kid. Oh yeah, having a big aircraft carrier thing like that. Chalet, you just had a video go up four minutes ago, <laughs> but I guess it was scheduled. <laughs> you remember aircraft carrier, you had major Matt Mason lunar craft. Wow, Andy, that's cool. Mega Man. All right, what do we got next? I don't think that most kids today could handle the fact that they couldn't save the game. And when they ran out of lives, that that was it. The game's over. You got to start all over from the beginning. Yeah. You've been hit by, you've been hit by a smooth diamond. Only in the 80s could a kid turn into a wolf in the middle of a basketball game. And yeah, so you guys remember uh, Teen Wolf with Michael J. Fox playing the Teen Wolf? They finished the game. This is basically true. You could have probably broke your leg in the game, and a coach would have been like, okay. you're all right, just walk it off. We only got 30 seconds left. Get back in there. Up four minutes ago. The good old days. Yeah, you didn't have to buy all these big race tracks and everything. You just go out and make your own little track. Oh, I already I already swiped the notification. But yeah, the notification said four minutes ago, Chalet. Let me see. Oh, now, but in here it says one hour ago. YouTube chat patroller went up an hour ago. Yeah, I mean, we just were so imaginative on how to play with our Matchbox cars or Hot Wheels. Yeah, either one. Lies, lies. Don't ever doubt your word. I'm not doubting your word. I was just trying to look at which video it was so you'd have a point of reference. But for some reason in the, like, bef before you open the phone, just like, then that said four minutes ago. I don't know. Uh, that's what your dad used to tell you. Don't ever doubt my word. <laughs> okay. Remember when typing was a high school class? Yeah. Did anybody take typing? Look at that 70s hair. 70s into the early 80s. I I didn't take typing as a class, but somehow like at a garage sale or something, I picked up this big old black typewriter that had the big keys that you pushed down. And somewhere my grandma found like a, a typing book, these books, and, and it would flip it like you would open the cover. Like here's my passport. But you would open the cover like that, and then it would stand by itself, and then you would flip the pages as you did the lessons. And so I was like teaching myself, you learned how to type and never forgot. I never really got, I mean, I, yeah, no, I, I was just doing it myself, a lost interest or whatever. I never really did it well. I'm hearing noise. I hope it's, 
cats. Let me let me just double check real quick. <clears throat> Look at the typing picture. Oh, there you are. What are you doing in there? Okay. All righty. I saw the noise. It's Piggy Piggy in a box. Piggy Piggy is in a cardboard box. Well, now he's out. But repetitive movements. A, A, S, S, B, B. Yeah. Mumsy, Mumsy learned typing. Andy could do 60 words a minute. Your dad would also say, did I stutter when I, when I would say really? Yeah. Really? Did I stutter? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard that one. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. That's how I learned to type. And all the keys on the typewriters didn't have any writing on them. They were just blank. So not only did you have to learn how to type, you had to figure out where the keys were to start with. Mm -hmm. The first day that I walked in the class, I saw that. And I looked around the class and I saw a big poster board on the wall that was a picture of a typewriter. So I went over and I sat down at the typewriter that was right below that because I knew most likely we was going to get assigned seats. And a lot of teachers would assign you to just wherever you happen to sit the first day. And that's what happened. How so it was easy hard. for me just to look up on this poster and at least know where all the keys were. Polaroid, the first instant camera. Yeah, we all know Polaroid. Yeah, but this was usually only used on special occasions. And you only had, what, 12 pictures in a pack of film? Yeah, Something like that. Pictures, yeah, no. I remember being attacked by a giant screaming rainbow. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, uh, but I think we all remember... Uh, if the television station lost signal or whatever, or went out for the night, then it would have this like rainbow thing on it until they came back on again. It wasn't 24 hours with broadcasting. SR 79 Polaroid. Yeah, buddy. But it was just technical difficulties. Yeah. And not only does today's generation not know what this was, they don't even know what static was. Growing up poor, sandwich bread, hot dog <laughs> bun, hamburger bun, garlic bread. What's wrong with any of these? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, 70, SR70 Polaroid. Yes, yeah, I love the bread. This bread one's funny. That's so true. They all work. You've heard of Elf on a Shelf. <laughs> now get ready. Wait. Operation on no Bun. Hamburger bun. When you have a bologna sandwich, like at school or summer camp or whatever, and they'd like make a million sandwiches for all the kids, right? Not just your mom making it. Um, they would always have mayonnaise on one slice of bread and mustard on the other slice of bread and the bologna in the middle and slapped together. If you're lucky, you got a slice of American cheese with it, but not always. And so it's like you can have ham, turkey, bacon, roast beef, any kind of sandwich. But when it's bologna, it's like it's got to be mayonnaise on one side and mustard on the other side and nothing else. <laughs> uh, you put butter. Yeah, a butter sandwich. You still do it when you run out. Oh, of hamburger buns or something or hot dog buns. Yeah, just use, use a slice of bread. They would give us lettuce sandwiches and they were actually good with a little mayonnaise. One time I was here in Cambodia and I was like really, really poor and on, on the verge of starving. And, and shortly after this, like I actually broke down crying to my mom and she sent me some money <coughs> to help. This was like years ago. This was like 15 years ago or something. And, um, but I really, I had, I had no money and I had no food, but I had some bread and I had some mayonnaise. So I just put mayonnaise on the bread on, and then put two slices of bread together and ate it. 
and just pretended like that it was it had something else in it. <laughs> yeah, that's a bologna. Exactly. The bologna's got to have mayonnaise and mustard. That's it. All right. What do we got? Garlic bread. What's, next? What's wrong with any of these? They all work. You've heard of Elf on a Shelf. Now get ready for a Goomba on a Roomba. That gives the Roomba eyes. Might keep your jog away from it. What the heck? That has nothing to the do with it. The eagles were right. We're all just prisoners here of our own devices. I feel sorry for anyone who never tasted chicken that came out. Of yeah. Did everybody have one of these? We definitely had one of these. I remember using using it once to like melt wax to make tiki candles. It was a mess. It was a mess to clean up. I see. Yeah, just a little piece of cheese. Yeah, ex yeah, especially like a slice of American cheese, you know. But I still to this day, I'll have oops, like a sandwich that's just mayonnaise and tomato or mayonnaise and cheese, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, like after, after, after Thanksgiving, day after Thanksgiving, it's best with the, with the leftover dinner rolls, but, um, mayonnaise and Turkey, you know, salt and pepper and that's it. Nothing else, you know, fried chicken and French toast, not together. Or do you mean together? <laughs> You still have it, Mumsy, but yours is green, right? Tell me the color. Everybody tell me the color. What color was yours? If you're watching on replay, write it in the comments. What color was your electric fryer? Your friend was visiting another country and she didn't know what to order and ended up ordering a lettuce sandwich. <laughs> yeah, Mumsy's is green and it's that avocado green. Or all, olive green. Yeah, yeah. Same same green. Yeah. Andy's was green. All righty. Green, green's green's the the thing. Green's in. Green's it. Mumsy, Chalet, and Andy, all three both are uh, both. All three green. <laughs> works great. It still, it still works great. All right. So of this. And my mom made the best fried chicken in these for years. Eventually, she started making them in a deep cast iron skillet. I bought her an air fryer here a couple years ago now. It does pretty good, too, though. Only true Taco Bell connoisseurs of the oh, 80s. Yeah. Remember the... Remember the Encheritos? Yeah, except I didn't like the olives. But, the, like, the taco sauce, the soda drink, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know what I love is the little cup of refried beans with the cheese. I still do that now. Like I'll take dry beans and make beans from scratch and then I'll make refried beans and I'll have some with like fried potatoes or whatever. But I, I, I like to take a small bowl and, and just shred some cheese on it and have refried beans and cheese. God, I love that from Taco Bell. Oh, the Mexican pizza when they came out with that. Or that big, they took the big flour tortilla and made the bowl for the salad. Oh, that was, you don't like olives either. French toast separate back in the day, but now it's a thing. Except, well, waffles, waffles and chicken is a Southern thing. That's why I thought, oh, well, maybe it's a variate. Maybe you're talking about variation. Because my first thought was separate, you know, chicken and, you know, making fried chicken in it. And then on also on other days making french toast in it um yeah mumsy probably made french toast in it you know my favorite way to have french toast you see my mom would make me choose i could have okay you get you get the french toast you get the butter that, that's a given but then i could have powdered sugar or i could have brown sugar or i could have syrup so the sweet was one of the three she would not let me have two or three. I only could have one powdered sugar, brown sugar, or syrup. But when I went to my grandma's house, she let me put all three. And to this day, 
I love having French toast with all three. If I make French toast for myself, that's what I do. Got to sprinkle some of that, that uh, powdered sugar or take a fork, right? You take a fork and then kind of go like this and it sprinkles all over. And, uh, and then, and then the brown sugar and then the syrup. Oh, that's French toast. <laughs> Mumsy makes, I make Mumsy laugh. <laughs> powdered sugar, butter, and syrup, but not brown sugar. Okay. Um, and Andy says separate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we laugh. Think there are restaurants, chicken and waffles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Waffle House. Waffle House has chicken and waffles. And all over the South, they'll have chicken and waffles. Mom, <laughs> how dare you limit me as a kid? <laughs> Memories. Yeah, that's what we're here for. You got to have powdered sugar. Yeah, got to have powdered sugar. Well, you know what? It's it's after 10. And this is this video, we're at, you know, tell you what, we're going to go to 10 minutes. Because it's taken us the full hour to get to seven minutes and 44 seconds. So we'll we'll finish up at 10 so it's an easy stop. And then we'll just continue next week. Okay, let's look. Ben Chirito and go. those old school black olives. I hate olives. I don't care what it's on. 80s childhood trauma starter pack. Travel starter. Trauma. Oh, trauma starter pack. So we've got a horse that's drowning. We've got... A rabbit what was that water ship down with barbed wire. We've got mice. Is this Fifel? There's some, this is why I don't remember. Do you guys remember those? Are you traumatized by any of those? This looks very traumatizing, but I don't remember it. I mean, that horse, you know how they always say, no, no animals were injured in the making of this. Look at that terrified look on that. That, that horse is not, have that, that horse is being traumatized. Forget about the kids, that poor horse. Watership, Briar Rabbit, Watership Down, Bambi. Bambi was traumatizing. I loved Bambi. I wasn't traumatized at all by it. <laughs> I loved Bambi. And I had to wait until, I mean... I always loved Bambi and, but I hadn't seen it for like so long, but I had books and stuff, right? Books. And then, um, um, I was in high school. It was, I think it might've been my junior year in high school when, um, it came out because Disney would only release certain movies once every seven years. And it finally got re-released in the cinemas again uh when i was a junior in high school so then i went through like a whole new bambi thing you guys if you guys have seen my house tour video or whatever you've seen my bambi collection yeah the mother dies yeah bambi mom at the beginning yeah wah, wah, wah. okay i respect your trauma the ravens are one tough cookie are you taking the red pill or the blue pill yeah, so we got Heathcliff, Voltron, Thundercats, G.I. Joe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, He-Man and He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, and Inspector Gadget. You know what? Of all of these, probably Inspector Gadget was the one that I actually watched. <laughs> if you have a favorite, go ahead and write it. Oh, Maven. Maven's one tough cookie. Yes. Yes, I am. I've survived. I have survived. All right. So if you have a favorite, go ahead and write it down. I like all of them. Moving on. But I'd have to go with the blue pill. Oh my gosh. So this was this Knight Rider? I'm I'm that looks like Lee Majors. Oh, no, wait. He's in a cop like Chips. But he was, you know, most the Chips was Eric Estrada. Is that Eric Estrada? And look at her. She looks pretty there. And then here she looks like she's had a lot of work done. Bless her heart. 
what are you guys saying? Gigantor. Wonder if I, oh, mom, I just saw that mumsy and yes, I will cry. I, that's why I don't even want to think about it. Not yet. It's not your time yet. You got a lot of years. Huh? Isn't that right, Artemis? You gonna come say hello, Artemis? Yeah. Say hello, Artemis. There you go, Artemis. Oh, you're laughing. Okay, okay, okay. Giganter was a space age robot. He's in he's in your command. Okay. Um, let's see. Except when it comes to your powdered sugar and syrup at the same time. Oh, I'm one tough cookie except for the powdered sugar. Powdered sugar, brown sugar, and syrup. Three, all three. It's called being witty. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, of course I will. I don't like, I don't even want, I don't even like, I just push that out of my head. You're fine. You're going to be around a long time. I don't, I don't think about that. Here's an example of the original William Shatner mask that was transformed into the iconic Michael Myers mask of 1978. The eye holes were made bigger, hair combed out, and then it was painted white. Boom, history was made. Well, that's I knew about this before, but I never saw them compared side by side. Kids today don't know this setup used to have the whole house jumping. My ex-husband had his, like, audio thing and it was like don't let the kids touch it in fact that's when james got cut J i was like on the phone i think i was getting an insurance quote or something i'm sitting on the couch it's across the living room is the setup like this and i see dan i mean james james was like touching the knobs and i'm like jasmine go stop your brother from touching the stereo and i'm on the phone and next thing i hear this blood curdling scream Jasmine and in the, we lived in a mobile home. And then so down the hall of the mobile home in the middle was the laundry room like right across from the back door and up on the shelf, or at least on top of the washing machine, I put the lopping shears. She had gone and got the lopping shears and, and went to cut it at his hand to like stop him from touching it. And his hand was dangling like this, but from here, I mean, I just, I didn't even say goodbye. I didn't say nothing. I just, I like hung up, dialed 911, police were on the way. I grabbed a towel. I was hold. I put the towel on there. I'm applying pressure. And he was like wiggling his hand like this. And I'm like, stop wiggling your hand because it's, it's gonna fall off. You're gonna make it fall off. And then I got this, this idea. I thought, wait a minute. He's wiggling his hand. That means it's still a tip because I was like going, what's the worst that could happen? Well, the worst would be he could die. He could bleed out and die. Uh, next would be his hand is amputated. Uh, next would be his hand is not amputated, but he has no movement in his hand. Um, but at least he has his hand, but it's just limp, right? And then that's when I realized he was going like this. It's like, well, it's, it's not that. And I... I swear to God, I'm waiting for the, the first responders to get there. And um, I start singing praise songs. I'm like, what was it? Like, um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't care what the devil's going to do. The Lord in faith is my sword and shield. Jesus is the Lord of the way I feel. I think it was, I think it was that song. And, and, and so he's going like, and then they arrive and, and it's like, I kind of have this peace, you know, because I went through that process, right? And uh, yeah, they thought I should be like more upset, I think. Poor James, he was tortured. I know, the receiver, the amp, the glass case. It was, yeah, they were real expensive to get. Uh, you had to get one because your ex-husband had to have, yeah, my ex-husband, you know, equalizer. Oh, brown sugar and the oatmeal. Absolutely. That's my favorite. The cinnamon apple and the brown sugar. Those are my favorite, uh, like instant oatmeal. Um, you had a similar older brother with garden shears. Oh my gosh. Sounds like a horror movie. I know. I know. It's just, yeah. Yes, I know. It's sad. But now he's like. I pray for him. I do. I pray. You guys can pray for James because he's got a really troubled time right now in his life. 
and he just needs the Holy Spirit to like, like he needs like a Saul on the road to Damascus, you know, bumped by God, change, make him blind, change to Paul kind of thing. You know, I mean, he needs, he needs like an intervention from God because he's not going to listen to anybody or anything. I mean, unless something, he has to have a come to Jesus moment, you know, and, and as a kid, he was saved, you know, all this, but you know, he's, he's gone way, you know, prodigal son, he's gone way far away. So your prayers are like really, you know, prayers for me, prayers for him. Pray for your youngest daughter as well, please. All righty. All righty. Let's just do that right now. God knows her name. All right. Hang tough, James. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to come before you right now and lift up our children to you because they all have their different needs and their different things that they're going through. And we just pray right now that your Holy Spirit would touch them and meet their needs and bring them back to you, Lord, because as much as we love them, you love them even more. And so we just lift them up to you and, uh, and pray that you touch their lives in the way that is needed because you are all knowing and you are all loving and you know what to do and you have the means to do it. And so we just pray that you intervene in their lives in whatever way is needed. We just ask in the name of Jesus that you would reach to our children. And, and meanwhile, that you would help us um, to deal with each of our situations and to know, uh, to have wisdom, to know what we need to do or not do, and that you would just protect us and protect them um, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, pray for both. All righty. All righty. Well, why don't, why don't we just leave it there at eight, eight minutes and 33 seconds that, that, you know, and then uh, we can just come back to this again next week for Gen X. We will continue. This seemed, this was like a really great show. Amen. Yes. Uh, excellent show. Excellent show. I love you guys so much. You know, you're welcome. Yes. And uh, thank you for joining because, uh, you know, God told us that whenever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in our midst. And uh, so he is, he, we are um, two or two or three, right? We're here together and uh, it's actually four of us, I guess. But, you know, there could be more watching and people watching on replay too. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Mabel will watch or Lemoyne or, or somebody or Snow and people that didn't make it now. Yeah. Hugs to everyone. So in case you didn't know, love transcends time and space. So wherever and whenever you are watching this, I love you. Yes. And I found for tomorrow night, I, I dug up this little backup. So I'm going to see if there's any kind of pictures in there that I can throw together for a slideshow for tomorrow. And uh, so... There we go. All right. Love you guys. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> Bye.